Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Stephen Moore. Thank you for joining the webinar tonight. Uh, we are going to go over the role of carotenoids in eye health and a uh, new innovative tool to help measure carotenoids and add value to your practice tonight. I want to thank uh, Dr. Trevor Crabtree for uh, organizing this and putting this together. Uh, many of you uh, can recognize uh, Dr. Crabtree from the conference that you attended in Canada. I know many of you know Dr. Andy Feltz is, as well, uh, that are, that's going to be with us tonight, who's also an optometrist. And so um, our company is MD Solution. We're the leading distributors for Pharmanex and integrating this successfully in uh, hundreds of practices around the United States. And what I want to do here is uh, introduce Andy Feltz, who's an optometrist. He's the founder of the largest home health care, or I'm sorry, the clinical director of the largest uh, mobile healthcare company in the United States. Uh, he's an executive with Healthcare Alliance as well as MD Solution. He's been in practice for 23 years. Uh, he's going to be our first speaker tonight. Um, I've been doing this now for about 15 years, educating physicians around the United States as well as South America and some business expansion uh, across uh, Europe as well. And then uh, you're going to hear from Dr. Crabtree uh, towards the, uh, the end of this conference. And uh, he's been in practice for 28 years. He's been doing nutrition in his practice uh, nearly that entire time. And he's also a member of the Ocular Nutrition and Wellness Society. So with our introductions here, uh, Dr. Feltz, why don't you go over our agenda here and kick this thing off? Great. Thank you, uh, Dr. Moore. I appreciate that. So yeah, so tonight we want to uh, talk about AMD prevention uh, and intervention, uh, how carotenoids are really the standard of care now. Uh, how the demand for nutritional supplements is very high in the U.S. Uh, we'll go over some of the uh, market trends for that uh, and how we can offer a better solution. Uh, we, uh, you know, we tried to sell supplements in our office. It was very awkward, and uh, now it's uh, just natural and easy, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the company that's supporting us, uh, that does the research, uh, that has the back office support, and then how that revenue can generate into your practice to support uh, all the other things you want to do, uh, you know, to, to, to keep your business profitable and, and healthy. So that's the, that, those are the agenda points for tonight. As optometrists, we're, we're very aware of how cutting edge technology is super important for our practices. And uh, if your practice is like anything like mine, we've, we bought lots of different machines over the years from OCT to tear labs to, you know, any number of things uh, that uh, keep us on the cutting edge of the, the really cool and innovative things that have, that have come out in eye care. And that's what's really important about the biophotonic scanner is it's another device that is essential to your practice because we know that macular degeneration is a big issue. It's the leading cause of blindness in the Western world. Um, you know, one in 10 people, uh, 65 and over will have that disease uh, and it goes up as, as you know our age goes up and there's tons of new cases every year now the blue light exposure that we're about to get exposed to on a daily basis is going to increase that in incidence most of you are aware that uh, lutein and zeaxanthin are, are very important to eye health uh, our body takes in lutein and zeaxanthin through our diet and then uh, deposits those nutrients in the in the macula uh, and the perimacular area uh, and then lutein is metabolized into mesozeaxanthin, and those, those nutrients help protect our eyes from oxidative stress. And the more of those nutrients we have in the back of the eye, now research has shown, the less likely we are to have those problems. As scientists, it's very important, scientists and clinicians, it's very important that we stick to that scientific principle that we evaluate something, we intervene or recommend uh, uh, some type of intervention, and then we reevaluate to make sure that our intervention, our recommendation made a positive impact on that patient. So in refractive care or, you know, the best analogy for me is glaucoma. We measure pressure. We have other factors and we decide that someone needs to be treated for glaucoma. We would prescribe a drop and we would never just rely on the study that says that, you know, most people who have latanoprost prescribed will get a 25 to 30 percent reduction in the pressure. We always bring that patient back and check their pressure to make sure that drop worked for them specifically. And when it came to nutrients for macular health, we've been mostly guessing because we didn't have good tools. You know, we saw some reason to intervene or there was a, there was a, a significant family history and there was concerns there. And so we made recommendations, 
but we never had a way to track that patient to make sure their body was absorbing or, or utilizing those nutrients. It was kind of a missing piece for us as clinicians. Now we have this test and it allows us to do for nutrition what we've done for all the other things we, you know, we treat and track in, 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 in eye health. So it takes about 30 seconds to test. It's portable. It's very small footprint, which I love. It's about half the size of a football. You know, so, you know, so it's, you know, basically you can grab it. Uh, it's very cost effective for the practice and the patient. And sadly, the American diet shows about a 90 to 95 percent failure rate. And yet we can get a very, very strong response rate from intervention, which is what we all want to see. Let me talk a little bit about the physics. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, this is old physics that we've been re-engineered for human tissue. So Raman spectroscopy won the Nobel Prize in, the, in 1930. And essentially we're going to shoot a dedicated wavelength of light into human tissue. And carotenoids, the way those uh, conjugate bonds are formed, they will shift or resonate that light and kick it back at a specific wavelength. And that's how we measure the concentration in parts per billion within the tissue. The same technology that's used in the Hubble telescope. So that National Institute of Health, uh, about 15, 20 years ago, uh, commissioned a study with the University of Utah's biomedical uh, optics and also their astronomy department, research how can we find uh, a way to measure risk factor for macular degeneration by using Raman spectroscopy inside of the eye into the macula. And so a couple of researchers, Dr. Warner Gellerman was the leader of that team, and they were measuring with this uh, device you can see on the right, they were shining a blue laser basically into the macula, and lutein and zeaxanthin would shift the wavelength of that light uh, to green wavelength, you know, in the, in the low 500s, and we, it would kick it back or, or reflect back, and they would measure those, you know, those photons. Uh, was working excellent uh, measurements. However, they were concerned about a couple things. One is it was very difficult to administer from, you can see from the test, to just lighting it up. And then also how many times could you measure one eye without doing any damage to the macula long-term? We know the blue light has you know, significant effects on the eye if you, if you have uh, continued exposure. So inadvertently, they found out that this test works in skin. And so they got, that became the focus. And they found out that what they're measuring in the skin directly correlates to what's in the blood. And more importantly, because it's tissue testing, it has a long-term uh, factor, more like an A1C of nutrition versus a short-term uh, blood test. So it really is a more valuable test than, than, than serum carotenoids. And now we've got this new study, well, not new, but 2017 study, early 2017, in investigative ophthalmology and, and visual science that showed that what we're measuring in the hand, the skin, directly correlates not just to the serum, which we already knew, but also directly correlates to the, the nutritional levels that are in the macula. So essentially what we're saying is tissue is tissue. If we're measuring in tissue and we're seeing high levels in tissue, we're gonna see high levels in the macula. If we're seeing low levels in the tissue of the hand, we're gonna see low levels in the macula. And that really has been, you know, kind of the groundswell of why we're so uh, excited about how eye care has adapted our technology. And now we can treat macular degeneration and eye health similar to how we've looked at our other uh, focuses like glaucoma and vision in which we, we test something, we see a deficiency, we intervene, and then we retest to make sure that, that we've made an impact uh, on that condition. So we've done uh, almost 30 million scans now worldwide, and uh, we've seen how these numbers, uh, you know, change based on lifestyle, right? So smokers tend to score very poorly, right? Because they're generating free radicals on a regular basis. Even if they're eating well, they're churning through those nutrients at such a fast pace because they have so much, so much free radical activity. Sadly, the average American is, you know, kind of a D on the nutritional scale. Uh, they eat about two servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Um, but yet, if we intervene and put people on a really good product, they're going to score in the in the good zone, in that you know forty eight or that green zone. And then if we you know really give them a full spectrum nutritional package, they're going to be in that really well protected zone of the of the blue zone. And that's where really where we want. I like to get my patients to about fifty thousand. 
so the the cell membrane it, it, you know is very vulnerable to oxidation in the in, in in any part of the body including the eye and we have multiple antioxidants that that are available to us including vitamin c and vitamin e the carotenoids are special in that they deposit themselves within the cell membrane and they don't just neutralize free radicals which is important they also are a signal, signaling compound. So when they get neutralized, when they neutralize a free radical, when they get exposed to free radicals, they actually signal to the nucleus to make the intrinsic antioxidants within our body. And that helps to drive up our uh, uh, defense mechanisms. So they're really valuable in that regard. Glaucoma is another condition. So beyond macular degeneration, Beyond ARMD, there are many conditions, not only of the eye, but of the full body where carotenoids are important. We know that antioxidants now enhance ocular perfusion, and that can help us defend our, uh, our, our nerve tissue uh, from the damages that come on from uh, open angle glaucoma, and that supplementation can help that. On a non-eye focus, breast cancer is obviously a big deal. You know, my, my wife is at risk. Uh, over 40,000 women die each year. Uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And even though we're not going to treat breast cancer, if we can make the public more aware of it and we can help screen for it, I think that's really, really a, an important service that we can provide. Optometrists have a special uh, piece within the primary care health system in that we tend to pe see people, uh, patients, prior to them getting very sick. And so if we can divert some folks into a better lifestyle, I think that's really helpful. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition uh, did a study. It's a 20-year uh, prospective study, not retrospective. So this was started 20 years ago, and they looked at these patients over 20 years and measured their carotenoid status. And those that had a higher level marked difference in not only their, uh, the, the, the incidence of breast cancer, but the aggressive and ultimately fatal diseases and so carotenoids are super important for uh, breast cancer prevention. Really cool study was that our device was used by the Palermo Cancer Institute in Italy, and they did post-surgical breast cancer patient study. And after five years, patients that scored 50,000 or higher, which was that blue zone we showed earlier on that kind of uh, 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 dial that, that, that was available uh, in the previous slide, marked reduced risk of their cancer. So we know carotenoid status or that nutritional status really helps people not only prevent cancer, but if you have, happen to have it, uh, re reduce your risk of re recurrence. If you did a literature search uh, on carotenoids and, and diseases, you'd find, you know, thousands upon thousands of, of, of studies. So from Alzheimer's, which is obviously a big deal, you know, down to rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, we know that antioxidants and carotenoids are, are highly studied and are, and are super important. And now that we have a test to measure them, you know, we feel like we can make a difference in, in people's understanding and, and how they would, you know, change their lifestyle. So why do we want to do this? Well, our current system is unsustainable, right? Uh, almost a, a quarter of our GDP is spent on healthcare, and yet people are sicker than ever. Uh, you know, cancer and heart disease and diabetes continue, their incidence continues to rise. And yet at the same time, doctors especially primary care doctors like optometry, see their, their incomes being impacted by how insurance is paying us. And yet, you know, patients are, are dissatisfied, you know, with the, with the current healthcare system. This is a really disturbing slide for me. Uh, I'll try to break it down in the simplest terms I can, but essentially if you were born in the mid thirties, by the time you turned 65, about 9% of your peer group had, an, had a reduced activities of daily living. So a reduction in, you know, being able to dress themselves, you know, get across the room, go to bed by themselves, bathe themselves, things of that nature. And yet 10 years later, if you were born in the, in the, you know, mid forties, when you turned 65, about 13% of your peer group had an, uh, had a decreased ADL. So a 50% jump, we're getting more disabled and sicker at 65 by a significant clip than we used to. And that mostly comes down to diet and lifestyle. And I'd like to have Dr. Stephen Moore, because he's really an expert in this. He's helped hundreds of physicians implement this, this uh, program into their practices. And um, 
I'd like to have him kind of continue and, and talk about a little bit about what, what we're going to talk about next. Yeah. Thanks Andy. And uh, great job uh, starting this off. And so when we look at point number two here, you know, we used to think that you can get everything you need from your diet and, you know, I've got a, a garden in my backyard and uh, we grow things organically there. And if we could get a harvest and that's when we ate 10 or 15 servings out of our garden in our backyard, then, you know, we could get the nutrients that we need in our diet. But the reality is, is nobody is doing it. And that's the problem. And that's where supplementation comes in. So when we start to look at diet and lifestyle, um, it's not only the number one uh, cause of macular degeneration, but it's also the number one cause of disease. And there was a study done by the USDA of 22,000 people. Nobody, not one person was getting the minimum RDAs of 10 of the most essential nutrients. And JAMA, which is the, the major journal of the American Medical Association, published a study showing that all adults should take a multivitamin. Now, this isn't new news. This was like 16 years ago this got published. But medicine, we know, is uh, slow to embrace things. And so uh, the, the, the research, the science has is, is just been accelerating. Uh, what we also have found is that 50% of the people that are coming into your practice or anyone else's practice are probably already buying a supplement according to the study that was done on the, the uh, US or the uh, CDC. And the problem is there's no real way to easy or easy way to measure the effectiveness of that. And so there's all kinds of problems with patients going out there and buying brands that haven't been tested and we really don't know what the quality is. In fact, the New York Attorney General filed a cease and desist letter from uh, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, and uh, GNC for selling fraudulent products. Vitamin Shop had lead contamination not once but twice. And these are a few examples of the problems that exist out there in the supplement industry. And so when we look at point number three, how big is this supplement market? Well, this is the sales of supplements over the last 17 years just here domestically. It's approaching $38 billion, and it's growing by $1 to $2 billion a year. And one of the fastest growing segments within the supplement industry is for eye supplements. And so uh, where where is a better way to uh, get your carotenoid levels measured and go on a uh, eye formula that would be in an optometrist or ophthalmology practice. And so the problem with um, retail is that nobody really knows what supplement they should take. There's no real way to uh, know if it's working. And so you've got consumers and patients that are out there. You know, if you've ever walked up and down a vitamin aisle at a pharmacy, it, it's, it, it's crazy how many products are out there. It's impossible to not only choose a product, but to actually even try or begin to figure out what's actually in these programs. And so the current state right now is, you know, you have your patients going to GNC or who knows where they're buying things. And uh, you've got the manager or some teenager saying, hey, trust me, this is what you should be taking. And I really think that healthcare providers are much better positioned to make those recommendations uh, and uh, add value to that patient visit. Uh, when you look at the potential, there's about $700,000 of uh, supplement business that's currently being sent out the door by physicians. That's revenue that uh, you're not capturing on. And so there's now a way for you to do it better in your practice, capture that revenue, have a healthier practice and have healthier patients. And so but we're going to talk here about point number four, which is really a better solution here. So we measure things in eye care. We measure things in science. We measure things in the body, whether it's blood pressure to tell you how well the blood pressure medication or exercise is working. Vitamin D testing is becoming very popular. We're seeing the deficiencies here. And now with this device, we have an easy way of measuring these carotenoid levels, which is addressing you know, diet and lifestyle being the number one cause of preventable disease and particularly of interest in, in uh, eye care. So by recommending a product uh, from Pharmanex, they're the only products that have been proven and guaranteed to increase antioxidant levels. Not only their comprehensive formulas, but their eye formula is the only eye formula proven and guaranteed to increase carotenoid levels of the body. And so what you can do now is you can give your patients a baseline score wherever that first test is. Uh, they start on the, the Pharmanex supplements, and then a couple months later, they come back. There's a guarantee their score improves in a two to three months or they get their money back. And um, four to six months is typically where we see a steady state or a full saturation. And what this does is it gives patients feedback uh, that what they're doing is making a difference, that your recommendations are worth the money that they're investing. And it's also a great way for you to hold them accountable uh, just like you would with anything else. And so some validation on the technology, Yale University 
has a 10 year study on the technology, concluding it's a biomarker of health related to diet and lifestyle. This study was also done with the, in conjunction with the USDA. There's now 85 peer reviewed studies that have been published uh, in clinical journals now regarding the technology. It's being used in major medical schools, including Texas Tech Medical School. Uh, Dr. Stuart Richard used it as part of the ARIDS trial. Uh, he's a big proponent of what we're doing too. Dr. Jerome Sherman over at SUNY um, uh, is very familiar with the technology, endorses it, and as well as the products. And many other top uh, industry thought leaders are now coming on board with this because it's really the easiest and most effective way to address uh, these carotenoids and nutritional health in the patients. So a lot of additional validation. We talked about uh, Yale, but Stanford University also published a study on the device. Um, the uh, Arvo uh, presented a, a poster that was, or some scientists presented a poster there. That was a major ophthalmology conference. Um, the company was the winner of the most innovative company in the United States. It's even been featured on the Dr. Oz show about preventing cancer. They've been featured on the Discovery Channel about aging and epigenetics and how they're now addressing uh, nutrition uh, or um, uh, genetics using uh, nutritional interventions. Uh, this was also the first company to get the approval to sponsor the U.S. Olympic team. They're listed in the PDR. They're a Forbes top 100 most trustworthy company. Uh, they're top rated by the Better Business Bureau and Dun & Bradstreet. So this is a company that you can trust that's not going to embarrass you, that's going to take care of fulfilling these orders and taking care of your patients. A little bit about the way the company was started. This is not your typical supplement company that may have been started by a, a group of uh, optometrists or other physicians uh, or maybe uh, some marketing people that got together and wanted to get into the supplement business. Pharmanex uh, was... When I researched the company, I was very impressed to find out that their, their founding scientist, uh, Joe Chang, was the f one of the chief scientists over at Wyeth. He invented Lodine and Rapamune. Those are two major drugs, as well as uh, photocancer therapy. Michael Chang discovered and developed the first statin drug from Red Yeast Rice, and Carl Jurassi developed the birth control pill from the Mexican yam. And their role in pharma was drug discovery. So most drugs have their origins in nature. And these scientists were experts in understanding natural medicine. And they had researched about 50,000 plant samples uh, to isolate compounds that could be used for medicine safely. And as they were bringing those products to the drug companies, every time they had a natural compound, the drug companies would always have to manipulate the molecule a little bit so they could patent it and it would produce side effects. And these scientists knew what products were working naturally, what were safe, what the mechanism of action were. They were experts in doing that. And so they uh, wanted to leave pharma to really bring the natural products to mar market using a pharmaceutical method. And um, they at first went to the supplement companies to bring the science to them, but everything was really a bunch of snake oil. Nobody was doing the level of standards and science that they were used to seeing. And so they decided to start their own company. They raised about $46 million in venture capitalist funding back in 1995. And they were the largest nutritional startup ever. And they originally sold their products in about 40,000 pharmacies. Uh, a few years later, um, uh, Monsanto and Wyeth tried to buy them for about $135 million. And then there was a skincare company that had grown very quickly in the early 90s called New Skin Enterprises that had a lot of new cash flow and they wanted to invest in a research engine. They ended up buying Pharmanex and poured a lot of money into the company. Uh, they recently built a $150 million innovation center that you can see here. This was all paid for in cash. Uh, we actually have an uh, event, a healthcare conference coming up next month. If anyone's interested in attending that, uh, you'll be able to tour all the facilities, hear from PhD scientists, learn how this is working in practices, how to integrate it, how to, you know, and how to really help your patients. So that conference is November 15th to 17th. If you have an interest in it, let us know. And uh, Nuskin has been in business for 33 years. There's over 100 mutual funds investing in their stock. They're currently investing about $60 million a year just in R&D. There isn't another nutraceutical company that's even close. Most companies aren't even doing 60 million a year or 10 million a year in sales. Uh, they're spending uh, and investing huge amounts of money in research and development and uh, publicly traded, as I had mentioned here. So as we move forward, we talk a little bit about the revenue. Andy, if you want to kind of shift gears and maybe you can share a little bit about how this is working in your practice, because you've built a, you know, not only a very successful optometry practice, but you've also built a, 
uh, one of the biggest mobile healthcare companies out there. And you've done some in, incredible things in business too. So I think it's appropriate to, for you to cover these next few slides. Sure. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Um, you know, from a business standpoint, we know that, you know, insurance reimbursements uh, will go down over time. Uh, we look at the number of Medicare beneficiaries that are going to rise and the amount that Medicare is going to pay us is going to go down. Uh, and that will trickle down to the private insurers as well. Uh, so we want to offer something different. This is a cash non-insurance uh, uh, revenue generator. And there's two components to the revenue, which is really critical. Uh, anybody can go out and sell supplements. It's awkward. It makes a little bit of money in your practice. Uh, without a test, it's, it's, it's just not going to work. So we have testing revenue and we have supplement revenue. And that's, that's super important. So a startup package for the scanner is a $33.95 startup investment. And you know, really that comes out to about an $8,000 value. You get a supply of startup supplements for you and your staff to sample or to give away to patients. We make a, a personalized web store attendance to the national conference that Stephen referenced, which is super, uh, uh, just a super event uh, to have the ability to listen to PhD scientists and other clinicians who have used the device and the program in their practices uh, is, is really valuable. Uh, we have an accelerator system, so it's basically training for your staff and yourself on how we make the system work. We, want to, we have a turnkey approach, essentially. Uh, there's some marketing materials, brochures, and things of that nature. Um, you know, the key to this is to is to have that $20 fee for the scan. Now, some doctors charge a little less, some talk, doctors charge a little more. The doctor in Manhattan, Kansas may charge 50. I mean, may charge 10. The doctor in Manhattan, New York City may charge 50. That That's, you know, but 20 seems about right. It feels like a copay to patients and, and positioned as a preventive medicine tool, they understand that insurance doesn't cover it. So if you only, only scan two people a day, you're looking at a $10,000 a year uh, cash uh, profit just in scanning fees. Uh, most practices scan at least five people a day, and that's going to net you, you know, you know, obviously, tw you know, twenty five thousand uh, dollars. And if you scan as as many as ten, you would be in the fifty thousand dollars a year a year category. So that's just in the testing, just in the testing revenue. Most of the optometry practices that I've helped with are are easily in the five five people a day category. And then we have, you know, Life Pack, which is whole body protection, or eye formula, which is eye protection. Even though we know that that eye protection also protects the brain, there's a lot of studies now on Alzheimer's and dementia and how lutein and zeaxanthin are really important. But it, you know, uh, an average practice has somewhere between three and five thousand patients, maybe. So just a hundred patients a year, on up to two hundred patients a year on the product, you can see where that annual profit just from that the the revenue there is is you know, obviously very attractive. I think also, uh, Andy, the one of the great things about this is there's no inventory, right? Correct. So we don't, we don't have a single bottle of uh, nutrients in our practice. Uh, basically, our patients get scanned. Uh, technician uh, educates them on what the scanner does. Uh, then the doctor prescribes something or gives them a little educational piece. At checkout, they sign up for a subscription. And this is really important. So they sign up for a subscription with Pharmanex. We don't run their credit card. Pharmanex does all that, ships them the product, and then Pharmanex pays for their rescan. And that second scan, I get a little check from Pharmanex to rescan my patients because Pharmanex knows that rescan is a super important retention tool. For me, it's scientific and compliance. For Pharmanex, it's retention. Right. So uh, as we're kind of running down towards the end, we're going to hear from Dr. Crabtree here. And really, you know, this is a good fit for um, you. If number one, you believe and uh, appreciate the importance of diet and lifestyle for the health of your patients, you understand your patients are, are not getting what they need from their diet and you want a way to be able to address that. You believe supplements that are of high quality can be beneficial. Uh, you like to measure, treat and monitor things without slowing down your practice instead of guessing and you feel that it's better that the recommendation comes from you as opposed to, you know, some of these locations in GNC where patients really struggle and, and really don't know if, if what they're taking is safe and effective. And um, you're also looking for a scientific approach that's objective, right? There's some other instruments out there that are subjective, 
Um, and this is really a very easy to administer objective device. Uh, Dr. Crabtree is going to share kind of some of his experience with a few different technologies he's used. And, you know, the last thing here is you're tired of sending millions of dollars out the door, right? There's no reason to send money out the door to somebody else when you can do it better in your practice without slowing you down at all one bit. So uh, we're going to hear here from uh, Dr. Crabtree. And uh, for those of you that are, have uh, just joined us on the webinar, uh, he's been in practice for 28 years. He's been doing nutrition for 20 years in his practice. He's an active member of the Ocular Wellness and Nutrition Society. This is something that's very passionate, um, uh, a passion of his nutrition. Uh, he's got seven children. That's a little tidbit that we don't normally announce that I think is is amazing. And yet he he's still able to keep his wife happy. I think he'd been married, what, for 25, 30 years, Trevor? 25, I think you just, you just celebrated. And, uh, um, and um, you know, he's out there educating physicians and uh, running a, a, a couple of very successful practices. So Trevor, thanks for joining us tonight. We're, we're happy to have you here. Dr. Moore, thank you so much. Dr. Feltz, thanks. Uh, great to have uh, you on there uh, help, helping out. This is this is something that has been such a windfall for my practice. As Dr. Moore mentioned earlier, uh, 28 years I've been practicing now and for over 15 measuring carotenoids. The first scanner that came out was uh, called the Impod, and it was a device that measured uh, the lutein and zeaxanthin in the macula through flicker photometry. And as Dr. Moore also mentioned, it's subjective. And it was very difficult, especially your elderly population, uh, if their vision's not what it could be or should be to try to get them to recognize, OK, the slide's going to flicker, push the button to get accurate and consistent readings was just very difficult. And I was actually at a nutritional uh, CE event and saw this technology. Uh, and with uh, we had four offices at the time, so we had four scanners. And when I saw this, I thought this is this is totally objective. The science behind it is so much better. I uh, this is, I, I'll take this. Uh, and uh, I had, uh, we ordered four of them and sent the other four devices back. And at the time when we did it, I was not even aware of really the revenue stream and how it worked. Uh, I just knew that this was a much, much better way to, to measure the carotenoids uh, than what I had been using. And then as I researched the nutraceuticals, as you've heard tonight through Dr. Moore and Dr. Feltz, the, the quality of the nutraceuticals goes hand in hand with the quality of the technology. Uh, he mentioned 60 million they spend a year on their quality control, their, their research, their development. Nobody else does that. They're, they're, you're not going to find junk in, in these products like you do in some of the others when they've been tested. So the quality of the product was important to me. And it was such an easy, natural transition for over 20 years as patients have come in. We discussed lutein and macular degeneration and the need for, you know, supplements. And so this was this was so easy. So it's just an extension of moving. We still continue to do the eye supplements and, and make our recommendations. But now with this technology, we also incorporate the whole body nutraceuticals because the measurement which includes the your antioxidant network, as they mentioned earlier, plays such a key role with cancer, diabetes, heart disease, dementia, and, and people are interested in this. And, and really, it's difficult to find healthcare providers who are having this conversation with patients. They just don't. And so we're so well positioned. This is, a, this is just a win-win a for optometry and, and a great opportunity for our profession to shine. Uh, and make a difference, certainly visually with, with eye disease. But I truly believe once you understand this technology and these products and you recommend and, you, and patients begin to embrace, I truly believe you're going to save lives with this because nutrition today is just nowhere near where it should be. Uh, so th this has been a great fit. Uh, the revenue is something that's been amazing and astounding to do something that you feel is so rewarding for the patient and yet at the same time be rewarded for it financially. Uh, once again, it's just just a win win. And I, I couldn't be happier with the technology, couldn't be happier with the products. And I actually practice in an area, a region that uh, where the poverty rate is fairly high. And you might think, 
well, some of these higher in nutraceuticals, it's going to be difficult for the population to embrace that. The opposite was true. These, in, these individuals were more than happy when you have a conversation about what they are, the quality of what they're getting, what it does, how important it is. You'd be amazed at the number of people who will invest in this and make it a part of their daily routine. And I've had so many patients come in and give me testimonials about how this has changed their life that I've I printed out posters. I now have huge posters all throughout the office of just everyday statements that patients have come in and made about how this has made a difference in their life. So uh, thrilled with it, thrilled with the technology, uh, amazingly affordable to me. Uh, the money that we can spend, whether it be on uh, retinal cameras or OCT machines or some of the things that we spend these days and the return is, is just limited. It takes years to, to recoup what it costs you to buy. And this, I think in my practice, I paid for this entire program in 19 days and it's been profitable ever since. So, um, it, it's, yeah, a, I often it's true. To, I often say to people, Trevor, where's the missing people, zero? Trevor, Right. You know, 30, yeah. Bucks. We're yeah, used to spending 30,000. So. Right. And, and the, and the buy-in, whether it's, you know, depending on where you're at, 3,300, 4,000, depending on, you know, U S Canada, et cetera, you know, including, I think the Canadian numbers are almost $3,000 worth of product. So how much are you actually spending, you know, for the technology? Very, very little. And the reimbursement being what it is, it's just, uh, it's hard to think of a reason not to do it uh, in, in my mind. So thrilled with it, thrilled to be able to present it, thrilled to be at the ground floor of this technology, uh, thrilled to help those who embrace it and sign up for it. It's such an easy setup in the office and we, and our team is so good. You've, you've heard from Dr. Moore and Dr. Feltz tonight. You can tell, you know, we, we have a team that, that, that understands and appreciates uh, nutrition, the technology, and we're here to from to walk you through the setup of this from A to Z. Easy to do, easy setup, and uh, and we're certainly here to to help you get started for anyone who's interested. Sure, Andy, anything you want to add with uh, how this has been incorporated into your practice? I don't know. Did you beat Trevor with a 19 day ROI? No, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see patients that often, so he's got me on that. Uh, but no, I, right. I I I just feel like you know I've talked to my patients about nutrition for. 15, 20 years. And since we've implemented this device, it's now it's natural. It's easy. They, they actually get it. Now that now my patients aren't dumb, but colors and numbers make sense to people. And it just is a game changer. The device is a game changer. I mean, I scan my family. I've got a six year old and four year old and they both are in the blue zone where the average tiles in the red, you know, my, my children understood how to improve their score when they were two years old. That's how simple this concept is. I mean, you want to uh, improve uh, children's health, you know, go, go scan some families. It's really interesting. So what we're going to do here is uh, anyone that has any questions, we'll stay on here for some Q&A. Uh, there is a chat there. Uh, just go ahead and chat whatever questions you have, and we'll be happy to answer these. Uh, this is being incorporated uh, not just into optometry, but many medical practices as well. Um, uh, Dr. Ben Gonzalez is actually one of the uh, top presenters on anti-aging medicine at two of the major conferences. Dr. Feld has been in practice for 35 years as an OBGYN. He's seen huge improvements. Dr. Andrea Sullivan in, in, uh, as a chiropractor and a sports chiropractor. June Kastner is in preventative medicine. David Rosenberg is in concierge medicine. So this is really being embraced by many healthcare providers across the United States. So as we're waiting for those questions to come in. Looks like um, we have a question from Rich. Uh, he wants to know, I think mainly why is the macular degeneration prevalent in the Western world? Well, there is a racial component there about pigment. Uh, however, our device is not just limited to ARMD. So, you know, we get to counsel people of other, you know, ethnicities about cardiovascular disease and antioxidant status. The, the eye is part of the body. And so if your cardiovascular system is poor, it's eventually going to affect the rest, retinal vascular uh, uh, system and that's going to affect eye health. Um, I generally do a rescan at 60 to 90 days. Remember, this is tissue testing. It's like an A1C. So really, if you're going to intervene with your patients, you want to want to get that that rescan somewhere around 60 days, you know, plus a little bit. Uh, and that's generally what I what I use in my practice. 
Yep. And and Steve touched on the the medical model and how it works, and to have something where the technology was really the tough part. That the whole system is is really easy in the office because it's it's simple as scanning most of your patients, and most people will have this done in our office. Uh, there's a there's an intro letter uh, that goes on their clipboard in the waiting room that says it talks about the technology and about nutrition. And it says we believe in this and this is why we are going to scan every patient. And that includes kids. Uh, they have a jungle formula. They have a teen formula. So we do everyone. And it, it, and it, it also says if you wish not to have this, please ask for a release form. So they have to opt out of it. Most people will not. Most people want to know this for $20. It's, it's more than reasonable. And for those that do opt out, I will go in the exam room and have a brief conversation about this test, what it is, how it works, how quick and easy it is. And most of them, uh, of those individuals will then say, is it OK if I still have it? I, I decided I'd like to have it. And then a brief conversation about the nutrition recommendations, kind of make a good, better, best recommendation and inform them, hey, you pick what works best for you. Here's what I recommend. A staff member will fill out the order form for you and fax it in. And as Dr. Moore mentioned earlier, the company sends it right to their home. So anyone who's tried to inventory and sell nutraceutical knows that that, that can be a chore in and of itself. So the fact that you don't have to do that is fantastic. And as, as Dr. Phelps was mentioning, we'll do the first rescan in 60 days. We then rescan every patient every 30 days after that. They don't have to see the doctor, a staff member can do that. But they like coming in and seeing their scores go up. Patients love that, it's, it, it's validity to what they're doing. And not only does it make them feel better about it, but it also keeps them in the program. It keeps them on the nutraceuticals. And the fact that then the company pays you for giving the free scan to the patient is once again, just a, a perfect part of the business model that makes this hard, to, to figure out why everyone doesn't have it. Yeah, so we've got a, a few questions here. And also, I just want to let everybody know, when, when this webinar finishes up, you're going to get a survey that will pop up. Um, if you could please do us a favor and just uh, fill out that survey for us. It'll take you maybe one minute to do. Uh, that gives us some feedback to see how uh, what you guys think about what we're doing here. Um, if you've got any comments um, that you'd like to add, there's a place in there in the survey too. So we've got a few questions here. Uh, so Connor's asking, uh, is the patient only required one prescription that will be refilled yearly or is an annual prescription required in order for Pharmanex to continue sending the yearly supply? So the way this works is the, um, the test is done uh, typically in the pretest room by uh, your assistant or your tech. Uh, the, you'll make the recommendation as the, as the physician. And uh, then at checkout, uh, your staff's going to help with that. Patient will fill out an order form. And um, that order form will just be submitted into Pharmanex. And then Pharmanex will do all the data entry, set up the account for your patient. They'll get a monthly subscription to it. It's just month to month. The patient can cancel at any time and it gets delivered right to their home. So they'll get a username and password. They log on to a website. Uh, once that order goes into Pharmanex and that account is set up, um, the, um, there's really nothing for the for the practice to do other than have those patients come back in periodically to get to get retested. Pharmanex will take care of everything, product support, returns, and everything like that. Um, any other products that your patients discover on the website that they decide that they want to buy for their overall health, uh, those will also create a revenue stream for you as well because anything they buy through their account will get credited to your practice. And uh, it's just a, a really easy, really nice program. And the other nice thing about it, um, Andy, I know you were mentioning this, that it gets the patients coming into the practice more often. Uh, more often the patients come in, the more likely they are to buy a pair of sunglasses or another pair of uh, glasses or something else that you've got in the practice, and it helps build that relationship better with your patients. Yeah, that's that third wheel to this. So, you know, we, we have this typical optometry practice, the bottom half, that bottom 50% of patients we're not going to make more money off of them. We're going to make less because they're only going to get what insurance pays us and insurance is going to pay us less. Then we've got your kind of your top 25% of your patients. Those are the ones you never want to lose because they buy a second pair. They buy sunglasses every couple of years. They buy the yearly supply of daily disposables. They're interested in prevention and they're buying supplements. We want to redirect that revenue through the practice, through testing and supplementation. And then when they come back to get retested, they have a conversation with the, the receptionist. 
they're tied into the practice. They may be looking at a pair of sunglasses, like Stephen said. It keeps them integrated within your practice and you won't lose them. And That's if I could add to that, I think the second part of that question too, the individual asked the, uh, how much the provider makes uh, on the product. And it, it, what it, what it does is the percentage that the provider makes goes up as your gross amount uh, of product distribution goes up. Uh, it starts off around 5%, you know, uh, in your first 1000, but as that increases, it, it can increase up to 40%. So as, as you increase, uh, your monthly gross, then the percentage that you make from uh, the products goes up as well. So here's an example of that. So let's say you're testing seven patients a day, 20% of them are starting on the supplements. They're on an average order for their household for $60, which is below our average, but uh, you know that's a couple bottles of the eye formula. So you're going to be put it, scanning one, 140 patients a month, 28 of them are going on the supplements. Uh, you'll get recoup your investment uh, first week of your second month and your $3,000 profitable month two. Month three, you're at 4,000. By the time you're at month 12, you've got 251 patients that are on the, the supplements monthly. Again, this isn't tying up your resources. Your staff isn't getting frustrated with the inventory management and all those other things. And um, you're at 38% plus your testing fees, plus some bonuses which brings in about $10,000 a month in that 12th month. So you've netted 75,000 the first year with just seven scans a day, 20% buying. So one and a half patients a day enrolling. So uh, hopefully that'll answer your question, Chris, as far as uh, Terry's question about um, vitamin B12. So um, if you send us an, an email, we will send you some literature on that because that's a really great question. And uh, there are there's some interesting research on that, um, as well as some updates that are coming based on the consensus of research. So uh, feel free to send us an email and, and uh, we'll uh, we'll address that question with you with with some articles. All right. So looks like uh, that's all the questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending uh, tonight's webinar. Again, this is going to end now. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Feltz and uh, Dr. Crabtree for joining us here. Um, let's go make a difference. Uh, you know, this year, let's set the practice up for next year when everyone's thinking about New Year's resolutions, right? Now's a great time to bring in new technologies into the practice. Uh, again, the survey is going to pop up here. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye.